let's start with question number 4 here in this sum i am not going to spoon feed because i have already thought how to solve this particular sum i'll just help you all with the balance sheet how to deal with that because that part was pending working part you all have to do okay so this part this particular question will be a little bit interesting this will be new pattern of solving interactive session so that you can also solve and rather depending on completely me to solve the sum and copy it down at the end so this is the question uh, just a second uh, i think now it is visible use the following information and complete the balance sheet given below the balance sheet is given on the previous page total debts to net to worth is 1.2 and this is the question so firstly please pause the question is pause the video and find out this question in your practice manual i hope you all have found out this question please do not fill the figures that i have already filled in my balance sheet because it is already given in the answer so be generous and let's start how how to start the sum in the exam the question what the question says use the following information and complete the balance sheet given below these are the ratios provided to us total debt to net worth that means the formula will be total debt divided by net worth total debt will be on the numerator and net worth will be in the denominator and the ratio is given to us 1.2 that is why 1 is to 2 total asset turnover ratio this formula you know sales divided by total asset it is given to us to it is in times sorry i had got a call uh huh. we were on total asset turnover ratio this is given provided us with times uh, this is two times gross profit on sales is 30% so firstly he write the important notes cogs can be also calculated like this sales minus gp so add this formula in the formula sheet where we have written cogs formula where it was opening stock plus purchases plus direct expenses less closing stock so if you want to write it over there average collection period 40 days that means collection debtors turnover we have to firstly find out debtors turnover then we'll be able to find out debtors that in direct way we have to go i am helping out how to solve the sum then inventory turnover ratio based on cogs so i have already given you all the hint how to calculate cogs and they have also provided you that year and inventory that means the answer that you will get will be the year and inventory that means you have to write the formula in this manner cogs divided by stock not average stock because the denominator will be the current year that is year and inventory and it won't be the average of two years i hope this is quite clear quite logical you have understand how to read this particular things i am helping you out with all these things i know many a times the stu fresh year students of ipcc don't know how to read the particular thing and that's why they lose marks and that's not your fault also because it this all things comes with time but now i am explaining you please remember this okay how to link things okay asset asset test ratio the formula is current asset minus stock minus prepaid expenses divided by current liabilities i hope i have said it right again i am saying current assets minus stock minus prepaid expenses divided by current liabilities i have said it two times because you can memorize the formulas now when we are solving the sums and i'll help you out with the balance sheet so i'm writing uh, only solving the balance sheet in my sheet but you have to solve it with the help of workings also so we'll write it like this balance sheet as on 313 2007 liabilities rupees assets rupees okay so what they have provided us we'll write that first equity share capital 4 lakhs reserves and surplus 6 lakhs total debts in that also current liabilities 
we have to find out that is question mark assets is p and m that is plant and machineries and other fas that is fixed assets we have to find out we have to find out complete current assets which is divided into inventory current in current assets are divided into inventory debtors cash okay the, with the help of the question we have to see how we'll get our answers and we'll be able to complete the balance sheet okay so what does the first ratio says the first ratio says total debt to net worth okay so firstly we need to identify what is net worth if you remember the balance sheet that was not complete with that i was teaching you earlier at the start of the chapter okay many students may have skipped that but they don't know they are into a great mess they have to finally go back and listen okay so i'll show that if you have not listened please go back and listen it will be helpful half information is always dangerous ha huh, see sources of funds owners funds that is shareholders fund net worth equity proprietors fund it comprises of this this particular part comprises of capital that is equity share capital preference share capital and reserves and surplus so that means that here equity share capital and reserves and surplus will become our net worth the question has said that total debts to net worth i hope this is quite clear sources of fund comprises of net worth and borrowed funds see here it is written and borrowed funds okay if you have not listened the balance sheet vertical format balance sheet explanation please go back and listen it will be very important and very useful to you all you won't make any mistakes i am serious if you are if you are skipping this particular thing you are into great mess okay so firstly i am writing like this this will become our net worth so with the help of that You you will add this and it will become ten lakhs. And with the help of this ratio, total debt to net worth. That means total debt divided by net worth is equal to one is to two. Therefore, net worth will be in the denominator. And denominator will be ten lakhs. Uh, that means total debt divided by ten lakhs. One uh, is equal to one divided by two. Therefore, total debts will be equal to ten lakhs divided by two. Therefore, total debts will be equal to. 5 lakhs. That means current liabilities will be equal to 5 lakhs. I am directly solving. I am orally explaining. Y'all, you have to solve it on your own. Okay, no spoon feeding now. Unless it is a new thing. Total assets turnover ratio. Total assets turnover ratio. Uh, I hope y'all have, y'all have remember something. Uh, I hope y'all you should remember this thing. I have told you that. when the liability side is complete simply total it off since our liability side is complete there are nothing no more things to add over here simply write 15 lakhs how 15 lakhs it is just the total 4 lakhs plus 6 lakhs is equal to 10 10 lakhs plus 5 lakhs is equal to 15 lakhs since liability balance sheet has to tally liabilities will be equal to the assets therefore assets will be also 15 lakhs i hope this is quite clear total assets will be 15 lakhs only not more than 15 lakhs or not less than 15 lakhs hope quite clear with the help of this formula total asset turnover ratio you will be able to find out sales that is total asset turnover ratio is equal to sales divided by total assets so we have two times in place of total assets you will write 2 is equal to sales divided by total assets that is equal to 15 lakhs and 15 lakhs you will take it on this side that is on the side you have written 2 2 into 15 lakhs will become 30 therefore sales will become 30 lakhs i hope this is quite clear when you get sales 30 lakhs you will just simply find out this gp on sales gross profit on sales is 30% that means gp is equal to sales into 30% will be equal to gp that is 9 lakhs so i'll show it over here directly gross profit on sales will be 30% of sales that is 9 lakhs so cogs will be equal to sales minus gp which is equal to 21 lakhs inventory turnover ratio 
will be COGS divided by inventory. See, see, they have also not written average over here. Okay. Therefore, inventory turnover ratio they have provided it in the question as three. So you will substitute three here. In COGS, you will substitute twenty one lakhs divided by inventory. Therefore, inventory will become seven lakhs. So we will firstly write seven lakhs as our inventory. Okay. Hope this is quite clear. Now let's see what all things are provided to us. Acid test ratio they have provided to us. So we have one solve acid test ratio. So we'll solve that for acid test. Ratio. The formula is current assets minus stock minus prepaid expenses. Since no prepaid expenses, it is irrelevant right now. Divided by current liabilities CL. CA is equal to we don't have CA right now. Stock we have seven lakhs. Asset test ratio is point seven five. We'll write it over here point seven five. Prepaid expenses are zero. CL current liabilities they have already we have already find found out that is five lakhs. Therefore, point seven five into five lakhs is equal to CA minus seven lakhs. Okay. Therefore, where is my LC? Yo. Five lakh, five lakh into point seven five is equal to three seven five. Zero zero zero. That is three lakh seventy five thousand, which is equal to CA minus seven lakhs. CA is equal to current assets. Okay. Therefore, current assets is equal to three lakh seventy five thousand. Since it is minus seven lakhs, when it goes on this side, it becomes positive. I know I shouldn't say this, but many a times student do not understand and they say ये कहाँ से आया और from where did this part came? We don't know. So that's why. I'm not always doing this because students get irritated and they feel uh, that uh, I am thinking they don't know even this also. But so I'm sorry for that. I have I've said it, so remember that. So therefore, current assets is equal to three lakh uh, sorry ten lakh seventy five thousand. If we add three lakh seventy five thousand plus seven lakh, we get ten lakh seventy five thousand. So that means that our current assets, our current asset, this current assets is. Ten lakh seventy five thousand. So that means that if we minus from our total assets, we'll get our like uh, plant and machineries and other fixed assets. That is fifteen lakhs minus ten lakhs seventy five thousand, which is equal to four lakh twenty five thousand. Okay. If you see in the practice manual, it is provided to you. I am just giving you all the explanation. You do a proper working. Okay. I have already explained how to do workings in the previous video. So now and then, every time I am not be able to solve all the sums, then it will be quite time consuming. I have to teach many more things. Okay. I hope this is quite clear. And finally, you have to, uh, with the help of this average collection period, you will be able to find out the debtors. Firstly, you have to find out debtors turnover ratio. Then you will be able to find out uh, our data. So it is your task to do. And when you find out debtors, just simply add uh, inventories plus debtors and subtract it from the current asset that is ten lakh seventy five thousand. You will get your cash as your balancing figure. If you want, I will find out debtors for you. Just a second. What they have provided to us? I'll take a new page. Average collection period is equal to. They have already said assume three sixty days in a year. Three sixty days divided by debtors turnover ratio. Therefore, forty days they have already provided us. Three sixty days divided by debtors turnover ratio. Therefore, debtors turnover ratio will be three sixty days divided by forty days, which is equal to nine times. I hope this is quite clear to you all. Which will be equal to nine times. Therefore, we'll find out debtors turnover ratio. 
is equal to sales minus average debtors or simply you write debtors just for the sake of the formula write debtors 30 lakhs divided by debtors and debtors turnover ratio is 9 times therefore debtors will be 40 lakh divided by 9 which is equal to we will find it out 40 lakh divided by 9 3 3 3 3 3 we will write this much only no points simply write approx and substitute it over here 3 3 3 3 3 therefore current assets is equal to what inventory plus debtors plus cash we got inventory 7 lakhs we got debtors 3 lakh 33,333 plus cash and current assets is 10,75,000 therefore cash is equal to 10,75,000 minus 7,000,000 plus 3,3,3,3,3,3,3,3,3 3, 3, 3, 3. and finally which is equal to 41,667 and we we'll substitute cash over here 41,667 and our balance sheet is tallied Pause the video and copy. I hope you all have copied this much. <sighs> Pause the video and copy. I hope you all have copied this much.